Game on. Welcome back to another edition of the Skate and Rebels pregame show. A big task on hand for your UNLV Skate and Rebels. They come into this weekend ranked fifth in the country, but they're welcoming a WCHL rival, the third ranked University of Central Oklahoma Broncos. Now, before we get into this weekend's action, we have to turn back the clock and recap last weekend's action against Arizona State. And here with those highlights is A.J. Reed. A.J., take it away. Thank you very much, Dom. Looking back to last weekend, the UNLV Skating Rebels welcomed in Arizona State from the Valley of the Sun. Now getting into game one of this one. Getting the scoring going early is Cole Wyatt. Just three minutes into this one, it's 1-0. Then shorthanded but still sure-handed, the rookie, Mason Kelly, bringing it to 2-0. ASU gets a goal back. But his first goal since coming back, it's Jason Demizio. It's 3-1. Matias Del Monte closes out the period with a power play goal. The Rebels go into number two, leading 4-1. Second period underway, and Bradley Gallant continues the scoring for the Rebels, making it 5-1. Max Johnson scores one to make it 6-1, but he wasn't satisfied with just one. In the third period, he comes through for another skating Rebel goal to make it 7-1. Heath Mench, Max Johnson, and Mason Kelly all add another goal. And the Rebels roll through game one, 10 to 2. In game number two, the Sun Devils brought their skating legs after the travel day, but Mason Kelly gets his third goal of the series, and UNLV leads 1 0. Matias Del Monte scores next off a Michael Petusov assist, and it's 2 0. Mason Kelly again for his second of the game, make that five goals for the series. Rebels up 3 0, but ASU was able to claw back into this one with two goals, the second of which coming shorthanded. Rebels on the power play, and once again for the hat trick, it's Mason Kelly in his sixth goal of the weekend. Bradley Gallant says, thank you for joining us on this journey. Here goes two more for you as he scores again, and the Rebels are up 5-2. to two. Third period, both teams aren't done yet. ASU scores their third of the game, but getting a penalty shot is none other than Mason Kelly, and he buries it for his fourth goal of the game. ASU again with two goals to make it a 6-5 game, but Cole Wyatt slams the door shut with two goals of his own to give the Rebels the win, 8-5. to five. Here's what head coach Anthony Vigneri-Greener had to say after the game. They, uh, they played good there. Um, I'm happy to see them bounce back. I knew they would. You know, those are three tough games that we played. Um, but uh, we had great goaltending from Vinny all weekend, and uh, he stood on his head back there, so kudos to him. I think uh, discipline is number one. We had issues last night. Again tonight, I think we had nine penalties. It's unacceptable. And then uh, we got to clean up our D zone. Our D zone coverage at times we get running around. Um, once we clean that up, we'll be uh, in good shape. Thank you for that, AJ. A very big series sweep for UNLV coming off of a three-game losing streak, a losing streak that they haven't seen since 2021. Now we can shift focus to this weekend for the UCO Broncos. And here to crunch some numbers is Ryan Gilder. Let's go by the numbers. UNLV versus the University of Central Oklahoma by the numbers. UCO is 21-3 in ACHA play and have a 10-point lead in the standings against the Skane Rebels. Their last loss was on November 18th to Jamestown. The Broncos have been efficient throughout the season, scoring an average of 4.5 goals per game and protecting the net, holding off opponents to under 2 goals a game. The Skane Rebels are coming off a series sweep to the Arizona State Sun Devils to make its record 17-5-1. UNLV has a special teams advantage, scoring on over 30% of its power plays and killing off the penalty over 90% of the time. UCO's power play by the numbers is number two in the WCHL at efficiency. However, the Broncos know how to find the box. Central Oklahoma's 136 power play opportunities is the most in the WCHL, and if UNLV doesn't play disciplined, UCO could force UNLV to play shorthanded. That's UNLV versus Central Oklahoma by the numbers. Thank you for that, Gildy. There was a lot of numbers mentioning special teams, and that's going to be a big deal this weekend. Two WCHL rivals, and also UNLV kind of had some interesting special teams work last weekend against ASU. Here with all that information is Zoe Salas. 
Well, Dom, last week, like the Minot State Series, was a story of penalties and special teams. But it was not all bad. The Skate and Rebels did not let up a single goal on the penalty kill in the 16 times they were short a man against ASU. The Skate and Rebels scored two shorthanded goals on the weekend, both of which coming from Mason Kelly, who had a monster weekend. UNLV converted on three of their 15 power play opportunities. The scoring three was more spread out. Mason Kelly notched one goal, Cole Wyatt another, and Matias Del Monte with the third. The UCO Broncos special team units are something to behold, with Vitaly Mikhailov leading the team in power play goals at nine, which is also good enough to land him tied for the most markers on the man advantage in the country. Tied with who? Max Johnson of UNLV. So, the key to this weekend is obvious, according to assistant coach Nick Raboni. They are very structured. They're physical. They, they, you know, they like to get up and down the ice. I mean, it's going to be a battle this weekend for sure. I think uh, the biggest thing for us will be discipline. I think both teams are, are fairly penalty prone. Um, so for us, special teams will be a big factor as well. And they have some, they have some great killers. They have some great power play units. So we, uh, we got to be good. I mean, the bottom line is if we don't have a discipline group where we're not going to reach the goals that we have set out. And I think that, um, you know, we sent a message by, make, you know, pulling some guys out of the lineup this on Saturday night that uh, that weren't um, it wasn't acceptable for some of our leaders to get the type of penalties that they had. So I think that that sent a great message. Um, I think the guys understand what's at stake this weekend, and I'm hoping that um, you know we're going to make sure that we're just going to play between the whistles and, and not worry about anything other than that. Now, these two teams have been rivalry standing in the WCHL for some time. Will this Cold War-esque rivalry translate into penalties and special team plays? Guess we'll have to find out. Back to you, Dom. Thank you for that, Zoe. We're going to have to wait until puck drop tonight to see what happens. But earlier today, the UNLV Skate and Rebels getting back out into the community. They visited Goolsby Elementary School, and it was a special moment for two people on our media team. Let's go ahead and take you there. It was a very full circle moment. Um, I only have very good memories here and the community and the family and the teachers here made it so worthwhile so being able to come back and feeling welcomed back is just an amazing experience amazing feeling I mean it's been 14 years since I last attended this school and I can remember it like it's yesterday and walking in Mr. Shankberger's classroom brought back so many core memories like field day um, PE classes just a lot of fun things so being back here was super cool the more I spoke to them the more it triggered my memories of the great things that they did and how kind they were and how determined they both were and to see them both following their passion and their dream and I actually got to see that today it just makes me feel really proud that we're doing the right thing here at school to build a foundation for kids to really believe in themselves and to follow their dreams I'm proud of them I really am you know and uh, it was great to see them come in grab their line of the day and look for their names it triggered all of their memories and all the experiences they had um, they just uh, they didn't let me down I knew they'd be successful and they're living their dreams. Mr. Shankberger, you by far are one of the greatest people I've ever met. Your outreach to the community, what you do for this school, the years you've put in here, you're amazing. And any kid that gets Mr. Shankberger in their lifetime is a lucky kid because he is phenomenal. And I used to even volunteer at his summer camps. That's how much I liked him. Even when I was in middle school, I would still come back and do his summer camps because he is just everything about him, amazing. Mr. Shankberger, thank you for seriously being one of the most amazing teachers. Um, that's something I'm so glad I'm able to say again 10 years later. Um, but you really have just made so many like lives so much brighter. Um, so thank you. And I can't wait to see you soon. <laughs> now it's all the time we have for this Skate and Rebels preview show. UCO, UNLV, coming right up in a few moments. Stay with us.
Back here inside of City National Arena once more, the number three ranked University of Central Oklahoma Broncos coming to town for the first time, taking on your number five ranked UNLV Skating Rebels. Thank you all for joining us. As always, on the call is myself, Dominic Lavoie, joined by Ryan Gilder. And Gildy, this is quite the matchup in the ACHA on our hands here tonight. So happy that we're here for two days because there's so much to dissect about these two teams. It's a top five matchup. Not the first time we've done a top five matchup this semester even. So a lot of good matchups for UNLV. Going to be a tough one against UCO. They're a very good team. Definitely a guilty. And for a quick little brief here on both teams, let's go ahead and set it rinkside with Zoe Salas and AJ Reed. It's a top 10 matchup tonight in City National. The number five skating Rebels are taking on number three UCO Broncos. Player to look out tonight, number 44, Matias Dalmonte. Whenever the Rebels need a goal, he seems to always come through. He scored the game tying goal in the third period to send the Minot State game to overtime. He'll be looking to lead the charge from the blue line tonight. But for now, let's head over to Zoe Salas. Zoe, what you got? Thanks so much, AJ. A UCO Broncos player to look out for tonight will be Sam Sykes. He has 20 goals, 21 assists. That's 41 total points so far this season. He'll be looking to get the offense going tonight. Dom, let's get it back to you. Oh, no, I no and back here in City National Arena as the intro video plays before UNLV takes the ice and guilty. We spoke with head coach for the Broncos, Mike Rivera, pregame. And he had a lot to say about his guys. Yeah, I'll bring up a lot of it during the broadcast. But right now, we talked a little bit about who he thinks is doing great this season, who has been having the best season, talking about a little bit about their goaltending and their special teams. But the biggest takeaway is going to be Sam Sykes. He's been the guy so far for them. He's gotten 41 points so far this season. Such a high total this early on. But something not really what Coach talked about, but he talked a little bit about, but just about the line in general, is Sykes, Reagan, and uh, Guara. Those three have 29 points this semester. Ever since coming off break, only six games, 29 points. So expect a lot of volatility from that one line. We'll drop those tender nuggets into the broadcast as we go, but the lights drop here at City National Arena. The UNLV skating rebels taking the ice, and as they take the ice, we'll go ahead and go through the starters, starting with UNLV, the ever-deadly pair, Max Johnson and Bradley Gallant. On the forward line, joined by veteran Jason Demizio, Max Johnson and Bradley Gallant having 30 points a pop. Gallant, more of a balanced attack on offense. 14 goals, 16 assists. Max Johnson, 20 goals and 10 assists. Quite the season for the Minnesota native. On the blue line, Matias Dalmonte, the man who comes through in the clutch, scoring big timely goals for the UNLV Skate and Rebels. And Rob McCollum in his first game of action since Minot State. He was out sick for both games last week against Arizona State. In between the pipes, as it's been all semester, Gildy, Vinny Benedetto looking to kind of enact some revenge against UCO. The last time Vinny played against the Broncos, it was in Oklahoma, and Vinny ended up having a bit of a heartbreaking weekend. We'll get to that later on in the broadcast, and as the camera pulls in, we're going to go over UCO starters. You have Sam Sykes, Cash Reagan, a rookie, and Zach Guara, on the forward lines, Cooper Kraus and Artem Shura on the blue line, and Doug Wakelin, the junior out of Colorado Springs, in between the pipes. Now getting back to the bit of a heartbreaking weekend, Gildy. We'll talk about it very briefly for Vinny Benedetto. I remember this very vividly. It was back in 2021, the last three-game losing streak that UNLV had. This is their first of that, that three-game stretch. Tied one to one late in Oklahoma. Davin Burton scores a game winning goal with a minute left. And he climbs the glass. And then the next night, UCO comes out and beats you in LV 6 2. You can imagine that that's in the back of his head right now. Yeah, it's definitely in the back of his head. But also, you don't want to think too much about previous performances against the team. You don't have a short term memory. You want to make sure that you don't let the previous games get into your nerves too much for tonight's game. We'll see what happens, but first, we'll take a step back for the opening ceremonies here at City National Arena. Puck drop just ahead. If you are able, please stand for our national anthem, presented by Chris Burke and Drew Long. Here to perform the Star Spangled Banner, please welcome to the ice the Goldby Elementary School Choir.
Ceremonial puck drop out of the way. UNLV Hockey welcoming Goolsby Elementary School. The Greyhounds in the house. Giving back to the community. If you're here for the pregame show, special moment for two of our media team members, Megan Roba and Kyla Ching. Both went there. Mike Shankberger, their PE teacher, helped escort our ceremonial puck dropper out to the ice. And we also spoke to him at the elementary school. Very, very nice guy. But the focus shifts to hockey. Two top five teams in the country, Gildy. Two teams that haven't played each other since October 2nd of 2022. And it was like, it was an exhibition game. It was kind of a game that was awkwardly scheduled because it was right after you know, we played against the University of Denver. And Neutral site and a rink with no out. Wi-Fi, so we have no video from it. And also, these jerseys, UCO wore them that last time. UNLV was victorious. The previous three matchups before that, UCO took down UNLV. They swept them, as I mentioned, in the open. And then in the national tournament, UCO came back from a multi-goal deficit to win the game and advance to the championship game where they lost to you Lindenwood. Know, you know what Skate Rebel fans want? They want to watch their team actually on TV this time defeat UCO with their very two eyes watching it this time, you know. They want the visual evidence going through the starters one more time before we get ready for puck drop. Max Johnson, Bradley Glotton, Jason Demizio. The forwards for UNLV, Matias Del Monte and Rob McCollum on the blue line and Vinny Benedetto in between the pipes for the Broncos now. Sam Sykes, Cash Reagan, and Zach Guara. Cooper Krause, Artem Shura on the blue line and Doug Wakeland in between the pipes. And we're underway here at City National Arena. The third-ranked UCO Broncos and the fifth-ranked UNLV Skating Rebels getting to it. UNLV already in the zone. Bradley Gallant going to work at the wall. Demizio sends that one softly over for McCollum, and Shura sends that one right back in. That's spun off the wall, but not out of the zone. Bouncing puck sent to the slot, but settled down by Dalmonte. Dalmonte's pass is tipped. Gallant whacks that one rink wide into the bench, heads up. You have our first stoppage about 41 seconds in. And that one hit, that one like it hit Cameron Williams over there at the bench, but it was deflected, it was very soft. He was able to bat it down. But wild play to start off the game. Cameron Williams, a freshman Bronco defenseman. Welcome to the ACHA, welcome to Las Vegas. A bit of an early wake up call for him there on the bench. Pass is picked off at center by Caleb Strong. He feeds it to the right wing boards for Cole Wyatt. Knifed off for Rand, shooting one over the shoulder of Wakeland. Good chance for Tristan Rand. Rand wax one back on. That gets blocked off of a shin pad. There here's Strong. Strong down low. Plays it for Rand. Shooting one. Shoulder it away once again. Doyle pinches. Sends it down low for Cole White. He gets canceled out by Reagan. There's Cole White again. Cole White. For Alec Johnson. Johnson stepping on it. Shooting one. Rebound loose for Kelly. Kelly, everyone knifing at it. And they. Don't score a stoppage of play. Tristan Rand put that one through the blue paint. Sticks come up. That's Rand and, Rand and Colin Hogan jousting out in front. UNLV showing some pop. Yeah, you see Colin Hogan when Rand was doing some extracurricular activity after the whistle, kind of pushing a little bit. Hogan, pretty still, pretty neutral, not having any emotion. That's what Coach Mike Rivera said in the pregame. He wanted to make sure... His team was disciplined and didn't want to have any extracurricular activity after the whistle. He did say that. He talked to us and said, I mean, I told my guys we're expecting it to be physical. UNLV is a very physical team. So just play within the whistles. And if you're going to play the body, make a hockey play. And don't tire yourself out because that, those physical plays really tire you out. And as much as it grinds somebody down or your, the other team down, it grinds you down as well. We have a stoppage of play. Once again, 18-20 left on the clock. Not a shot on goal registered yet for the Broncos. Now 
And the Broncos, a uh, high-powered machine in the WCHL in the last few years, Gildy. And as we mentioned in the open, head coach Mike Rivera also mentioned that pregame. These two teams have a bit of a rivalry, not on the ice as much, but in the standings, these teams both bouncing back and forth between one and two in the WCHL every single season. And as I mentioned in the open, these two teams haven't played each other since October 2nd of 2022, over a year and a half ago. Puck tipped in by Justin Sathopoulos, the rookie. Mason Kelly's getting in on that. He had six goals last weekend. Loose puck for Jackson White. Shooting one. Save made by Wakeland. And more sticks come up out in front. That's he mentioned Cameron Williams. Yeah, good shot opportunity there by Jackson White. A lot of traffic near the net. That's a good time to take a one-timer like that because, hey, maybe it gets deflected. Maybe it finds a way to sneak in. The kid line back in action. Heath Mench, Justin Sathopoulos, and Mason Kelly out there. Jackson White and Jake Berry, the defensive pairing for the Skating Rebels. Kelly ties up his man in the dot. Mench comes away with possession, spins that up top for Wyatt. Jackson Wyatt plays that down low. Mason Kelly sticks that one down. Kelly tries to wrap it around. Can't get around the outside post. That puck's picked up by Cash Reagan, the rookie. Cash Reagan leaves that one on the right wing boards for Guara. Puck skips free to neutralize. Here's Cooper Krause. Krause gains the red and sends it cross corner. Off the wall, stopped up by Benedetto. Plays that to the right half wall. Grant Smith can't play that one off the wall and out. Spun back in by Guara. Kicks behind the net. Now fed to the near wall. UNLV still trying to get a breakout going. D to D pass. Here's Barry. Barry gets taken down. Puck is going to be picked up there by Sykes. Sam Sykes moving on in. Shooting one. Misses the net wide. Sykes, the leading point getter and goal scorer for the Broncos. Definitely going to want to look out for number 12 in yellow tonight. Now here's Matias Dalmonte in his own end. Swings it D to D for Rob McCollum. McCollum sends that one up for an icing. Looks like it didn't get the stick of Grant Smith to prevent that. Yeah, but this is kind of what we expected from UCO versus UNLV. Looks like a heavyweight fight. Both teams just not throwing the big punches yet, just going around the ring, just throwing some jabs. Nothing too much yet for either team. Rand had a couple of good shots. Both of them uh, wiped away by Wakeland. But the big thing is that UCO is hard to score against them. They average giving up under two goals a game. So it's going to be tough to get anything on this team. Goals seem like they're going to come at a premium here this weekend. And that's to be expected between two top five teams. The shot in tight, steered away. An early chance for the Broncos, their first one at that as we have another play blown dead for an icing. The goals coming at a premium this weekend, Gildy, is something important because, I mean, you look at Doug Wakeland giving up under two goals against per game. Vinny Benedetto is just about under three. But regardless, I mean, the, UC, or the Minot series... Those are just two high-powered offenses. You have nine goals aside Friday night and then five goals total in a 5 nothing shutout win for the Beavers here at City National Arena. But, I mean, these are two teams, yes, high-powered offenses, but stout defenses. And Mike Rivera pregame also said special teams would play a factor, but he loves the way UNLV kills the penalty because it's very similar to the way he structures it. And he even commented on the Energizer Bunny penalty killing line of Michael Batuzov and Bradley Glott. He loves the way they, pl they play. Yeah, he talked about it was a different style of special teams, but he said both teams have the same mindset. Both of them very efficient. I say UCO provides the most efficient power play. UNLV by the numbers, which is my segment, of course, <laughs> is actually by the numbers the best power play in the WCHL. So two high-powered teams. They're, that's, they're the reason why they're both top five teams in the ACHL. Face off one to Johnson, he shoots that one, he sails that one wide in the net. Doyle can't stop that one, that gets touched out of the zone, but only gets as far as the red. By Rebroker. Played around and stopped up, Max Johnson feeds it back down low. Krause can't cut that one off, here's Gallant. Gallant plays it up for Rebroker, he gets hit by Demizio. That gets knifed back in, JC Dubecki. Under siege, takes a bump. Plays that one up for a broker. That gets spun out of the zone. And up ice. Now here's Shura. D to D. Shot there into the glove or off the pad there. Benedetto. UCO starting to get generate some shots on a goal. UNLV takes a 
spill in the corner. Now UCO still keeping possession. They play that one down low, but the Rebels come away with possession. 1-4 checker in there. It's Redmond. Jackson Wyatt can't float that one in. That gets played off the wall for Redmond. Redmond plays it back up. One time drive from the point. Directed aside. And sent down the length of the ice. Kelly gets stood up there. Yeah, Kelly with the puck passes it up. McCollum over to Stephopoulos. Stephopoulos shoots it off the crossbar. As such, Oklahoma will take it up. We'll go over to the end wall. It's gonna be a loose puck. It's gonna be dumped. Such Oklahoma's gonna get it at center ice. That's Williams. He's gonna dump it back in. Pass up the ice. Kelly's gonna get a tip on it. Gonna wave off the icing. That play will take it up. There's a loose puck that you don't be able to get at their end wall. Now a stretch pass over to Burke. It's gonna be tips, gonna be a loose puck. Flanders will get it as uh, there's a delayed offside. As we play on, sure I can't get that one. Here's Grant Smith moving in, shooting one, tipped wide. Played off the wall, Doyle sends that one in. Grant Smith gloves it down, but Mikhailov plays it through. They'll get changed up. Now down low, UCO going to work. Flipped over to the right wing boards, Max Johnson settles it down, plays it around. He gets bumped by Rebroker. But he's no worse for wear. Shura off the wall, stopped up by Jackson Wyatt. Spins that one to Jake Berry. Berry up ice, back for Wyatt. Tried to play for Demizio, but Shura's there. Demizio rubs him out. And St. Clair tries to play it through. We have a whistle offsides, 12.06 to go. Bit of a scary moment, Gilder. lost my voice for a second. Yeah, yeah, lost your voice. It's like, all right, Gilder back in the play by play. I've done, I've done baseball, I've done football, I've done I've actually done one ACHA game, did uh, Oregon versus uh, Alaska Anchorage. So I have about D1 hockey experience. NCAA. A lot of people get called up the day before, maybe day of. Not a lot during the first period, but hey, got to be able to adapt. Improvise, adapt, overcome. Loose puck, go on, shooting one. Loose puck in the crease. Everyone knifing at it. Max Johnson gets dumped in front of the net. Settled down by Jackson Wyatt. And he can't play that bouncing puck. He tries to keep it in the zone. A good chance for UNLV off of a broken play. Here's Demizio now. He just loses the handle. And the puck kicks out to neutral ice. Johnson sends that one in. And Burton plays it around. Stoppage of play. Puck out of play. Off of zone drop. Yeah, puck out of play there. We talked about being able to adapt during tough times. Like we had one that we had to deal with some adversity with a Wakelet had to deal with some adversity the puck was loose in the crease his defense was able to help him out there but that's an opportunity at UNLV they're gonna look back at and go like wow we really need to get that goal UCO goals come at a premium so definitely one that you'll be gonna think about later but they have the puck on their offensive zone here Mason Kelly wins the draw clean bouncing puck settled down by Dal Monte moving on in shooting one shot blocked out in front looked like by St. Clair Mason Kelly with the pickpocket Tries to feed one on. That gets blocked away by Duche. That gets played down 
into the zone. Mensch tries to spin it over for Sophopoulos, but Dubecki's there to cut it off. And Rebroker plays it around. That gets whacked out of the zone. And Duche plays it out. Now here come the Broncos. St. Clair gains the zone. St. Clair tries to spin it to the center of the ice. No one's home. And now here's Justin Sethopoulos. Sethopoulos pulls up. Backhand scoops it into the zone. Mench is there on the opposite side of the ice. Mench gets canceled out. Caleb Strong in. Tries to center it, but gets cut off by Dubecki. And here's Joey Eplin. Alex Johnson out muscles his man. That was Frank Mondi. As the puck gets sent into the zone for an icing. Not as much physicality, the occasional big hit here and there, but these two teams really seem like they're trying to feel each other out right now. Yeah, they both are because I feel like both teams, they talked about discipline before the game, and I feel like it'll take a period or two for both teams to really start going at it. You know, they even started benching players last week. Even leadership players, one of the captains was even benched on Saturday of last week because of making penalties that they shouldn't have made. With, uh, after the whistle, and also look at uh, UCO, they said, hey, don't play to UNLV's physicality after the whistle. So both these teams kind of toning it down a little bit in the first period. Puck goes off from Nick Doyle. Big collision there. Burton and Rand coming together, but here come the Broncos. UCO gaining the zone. Shot on net. Save made and held for a whistle. That was Jeff Redman putting one on goal for UCO. Their second shot of the game. UNLV with seven. Yeah, you know he's out shooting UCO. Will I say outplaying? I would say slightly. Still, UCO, they're able to hold their ground. They're able to block a lot of shots, and they're able to defend themselves. They're a bend but don't break defense right now, and they're not even close to breaking. Offensive zone draw to the left of Benedetto, won by the Skating Rebels. Now UNLV trying to start it out. Here's Grant Smith all along the right wing boards, looking for some help. He gets it. Here's Burks shooting one off the blocker of Wakeman. Puck settled down at center by Kyle Quinn. Quinn takes a spill to his heart in the boards. He's up no worse for wear. Guara tries to center it into the skates of Grant Smith, who gets it away from the goal mouth and out of play for a whistle. And Gildy noticing on the transition play for UCL. I mean, the play comes back out into the neutral zone, and then they're quick on the puck, and they're just getting that thing north. Yeah, they're taking it north, but what UNLV has put an emphasis on in practice this week is having five back. Always having five back at all times. Because against Arizona, they gave up a couple goals late. A lot of times because they had odd man rushes. Not all the players. They didn't have all five back. You know, if you put an emphasis on having all five back, you see it's paying dividends tonight against a team like UCO that's pushing the puck really fast. UCO trying to push a tempo in the offensive zone and get some more shots on goal. Working it down low now. The puck skips free. Shot there. Tipped in front. Loose puck cleared away from the blue paint. And sent right back around UCO, starting to get some looks on second chances. UNLV having to clear some rebounds out away from the goal mouth here lately. Max Johnson picks up a loose puck, tries to feed it back post for Gallant. That gets tipped away and sent out of the zone. Alec Johnson's back to recovery, spins it up for Demizio. Demizio gains the zone. But Bradley Gallant, a bit too eager, offsides. Gallant's a little quick. He said, oh, I had that back foot behind the line. Referee disagrees. It'll be an offsides call. It's too it's too hard for Gallant. He moves too quick. Bradley Gallant, a very fast skater. And a very unique skating for him. I've talked to him about it before. He skates almost at like an 80 degree angle, but whatever works, right? I need skating lessons from him. <laughs> I can see you out there buzzing just like him. Uh, I have to be able to turn. I'll go straight, but I'll go straight to the end wall. There you go. As long as you know how to stop. Shot there, tipped on. Mason Kelly trying to feed one. Back that gets blocked away. UCO blocking a lot of shots here tonight. Kelly, down low now. Gets stapled to the wall by Eplin. Puck skips out to the slot, but here's Reboker. Reboker tried to move it to center. Under the stick of Dubecki. We got another play blown dead. That was Stephen Duche, looks like. Got into the zone a little too early, or a little too slow. Dubecki kind of trying to drive the center. Maybe a toenail offside. A lot of high IQ hockey I've seen tonight from both teams. Like in that last possession, Alec Johnson had a centering pass without even looking almost. No one was there for the centering pass, but it looked like he had the right frame of mind there. And also, if you look at uh, Wakeland, there was a couple times the puck enters 
near the crease. He's able to poke it out. A lot of goalies will let would sit and wait and are too scared to try to poke it away because they're going to give up position. So a lot of high IQ hockey tonight. Tristan Rand flips this one into the zone. Plays that one around the wall. Jackson Wyatt's there at the point, stops it up, sends it right back in, but that gets blocked there by Duche, who spins it out of the zone. Down the length of the ice for another icing, and right in front of our cameras, UCO trying to sneak off. But the official saying, uh, nah, go back. Yeah, that's when, when you're a hockey player there, what UCO tried to do there. Everyone's straight face. Don't tell the line, don't tell the linesman referee who went off, who went on. And uh, they, they caught everyone there. Face off one by UNLV, straight to the point for Dalmonte, shooting one through traffic. St. Clair blocks it again. Whacked on by McCollum, blocked again by St. Clair. Now Dubecki goes to battle with Demizio. Gallant picks it out, feeds it to the goal mouth, stopped up in front by Eplin. But Wakeland finds it and Wait. saw enough. Yeah, I think Wakeland did the most aggressive thing after a whistle so far. Pickpocketing his own player. Sometimes you got to do that, though, as a goaltender. I mean, just control the pace of play and really kind of dictate how the game's going to be played in your own zone and maybe give your guys a break. Remember that, yeah, give them a break. They just got off the icing as well. They had a long possession before. Lakeland had that Gatorade energy going in the back of his head. I would rather have the line that's a little bit fresher. Now here comes UCO. First off, a shot blocked down. Monte trips a man up. No arm raise on either official. We play on. Good chance early by Robbie Rebroker on a two-on-one. The outstretch down Monte prevails. There's McCollum. Plays that one off the glass. Demizio taps it out. Sent back in. McCollum can't whack at it. Shot there from the slot. Blocked in front by Matias Dalmonte. The arm raised. And we got a whistle. And a penalty upcoming. On the skate and rebels, looks like Matias Dalmonte going for a hold. So, Guilty, we've been talking all game. The UCO power play, we finally get our first look. And yeah, we get our first look at it. Not the highest percentage in the WCHL, but the most volume in the WCHL. And we talked about last game. Having the power play can give you momentum. Even if you don't score, you keep the offense on your side. A lot of UNLV momentum so far. A lot of the puck on their offensive zone. Now, UCO has an opportunity to have the puck on their offensive zone. Shot there from up top, rebound chance, deflected away. That was Vitaly Mikhailov. Nine power play goals for the Russian this season. Power play unit out there. Davin Burton, the lone defenseman. Vitaly Mikhailov out there with Cullen Hogan, Adam Salzer, and Sebastian Duche. Got an offsides call. Cullen Hogan took a spill right in front of the UNLV bench. And you can imagine he's hearing some. You have Nick Doyle talking with Sebastian Duchet. Cooler heads will prevail. And a new power play unit coming out for the Broncos. Yeah, and a lot of after the whistle activity from UNLV as per usual. But UCO, ever, right after the whistle's blown, they're turned to mimes. There's, no, there's nothing <laughs> that they're doing. Here come the Broncos, centering pass, hops over a stick, settled down at the blue line by Dubecki. Now played down low, looking from the half wall. So looking, shot there, blocked in front, puck skips free for Dubecki. Then rink wide, that goes off of a, a stick. That was Krause, shot there from Dubecki, steered to the high glass. Puck whacked out of the zone under a minute to go. Wakeland way out of his net to feed Dubecki, and now here he comes. Gains the red, sends it in, brings that around the wall. And that's whacked out to the red line by Doyle. Reagan sends it up ice. Demizio stops it up at the red. Demizio takes the spill. Here's Bradley Gallant with speed. Gallant moving on in, short hit, and a diving play by Dubecki. And we have a penalty upcoming, and it's blown dead. And it looks like it's going to be on J.C. Dubecki for a trip. And Gildy, that was 
Interesting, I didn't see a trip at first. This might be a penalty shot, I'm not sure. Because remember, Galani had almost like a breakaway. And look, looking back on our stream really quick, it looks like it could be on Demizio. Doesn't look like it. Demizio looked like he went down by contact. So four on four for 28 seconds. Then a minute 32 of bridge power play for UNLV. As Hogan just whacks that one out of the zone. Off the draw, Benedetto way out to play it. That gets blocked out. And UNLV four on four for another 15 seconds. Trying to go to work. Here's Tristan Rand up the right wing boards. He gets around the defense and Rand shooting one off the pad. Good save by Wakeland. Now here's Burton. Dalmonte's penalty expires UNLV to the man advantage. Here comes Rand gaining the red, sends it in. Dalmonte's going to get on that one on Burton. Burton whacks it, goes off the official. Cole Wyatt had a pair of goals last weekend. He turns away from pressure. Now here he comes up the right wing. Wyatt with speed. Has it jammed out by St. Clair. Gallant plays that one over for Dalmonte. Dalmonte spins it rink wide. St. Clair is there. St. Clair up the left wing. Pressure by Wyatt. Both Wyatt's Jackson and Cole doing work against him. Gets sniped away. Cole Wyatt wins that puck race. Feeds it rink wide. That gets whacked right back into the zone by Eplin. Dalmonte is going to have to recoil. 45 seconds to go on the UNLV man advantage. Their first look tonight. Here's Bradley Gallant. Gallant moving in. Cuts outside. Tries to drop it there for Cole Wyatt. Jackson Wyatt sends it on in anyways. Into the chest of Wakeland. It'll hold for a whistle. UNLV gets an offensive zone. Draw 35 to go on the power play. That was a weird shot there. By Jackson Wyatt, just like the first one, it got a little bit deflected there. Lakeland is one of those goaltenders that he knows where to be position-wise. His coach, Mike Rivera, talked about how high IQ he is, and he's a very disciplined goaltender. Put himself in the correct position there to make the save. Alex Johnson taking another face-off on the power play. Heath Mench picks this one out from the corner. Mench bobbles the puck and gets pickpocketed by Sykes. About 20 seconds to go now on the power play as they go to work. Sykes killing time. Alex Johnson finds that loose puck. Johnson below the goal line. Johnson deacon to the slot. Can't put that one on. Here's Mench. Mench looking. Feeds it to Johnson through the wicket. Swing and a miss for the captain. Now here's McCollum. Five to go. Feeding Rand. Rand looking now. Back up top for McCollum. McCollum shooting one. Tipped up into the netting. A shot block again. Looks like this time was Zach Guara, the Victoria BC native getting in front of that rubber, and UCO kills off the penalty. Some really good opportunities for UNLV, but Doug Wakeland doing a great job, even though he's not facing that many shots, he's doing a great job being a presence there, because the reason why UNLV is passing the puck all around and trying to get their perfect shot is because they know if they don't get the perfect shot, it isn't gonna go in, because Wakeland's so proficient as the netbinder. Burton sends that wow. one into his own bench. That's the second one into the UCO bench for tonight, Dom. And I don't know if you caught it, Guilty, but if one of the the coaching staff kind of strolling up and down the bench even raised his, they they raised their eyebrows to us as we're like, oh, we. Yeah, I I raised my eyebrows even though I'm protected by a net, a glass, a table, my iPad, the MacBook, the MacBook. Our monitors. Monty sends it up, and here comes UCO in. All of shooting one backhand chance steered away. That was Jeff Redman. Redman been sneaky, deadly all night so far. Getting in the greasy areas where you least expect it. Burke plays that one rink wide. There's McCollum sending that one in on net. Wakeland just decided to catch that when he holds for a whistle. He thought about passing it there, Gildy. You saw that, but like we said earlier, controlling the pace of play. A little bit of play action fake and then decides to hold <laughs> it himself. Quarterback keeper, if you will. Well, no, it's always good. It's almost like a read option. Put, put your glove down like you're going to pass it out. If the Rebels creep, you hold. If the Rebels kind of go back a little bit, then you know you can pass it up. Connected football and hockey. There it is. McComb shooting one. Tipped my way. By Kelly, Mason Kelly parked out in front. Looking for his seventh goal 
in three games. Rob McCollum back to recover. Drops it off. That gets sent off the glass and into the UCO zone. Eplin settles it down and sends it right back up. Kelly finds the loose puck. Mason Kelly cuts outside. Looking. Gets pickpocketed by Eplin. Now here's Mikhailov. Mikhailov gains the red, sends it in, gets changed up. And Doyle's in to recover. Here's Nick Doyle. Puck skips free to the left wing boards. Demizio works it free. But Alec Johnson finds it, gains red, sends it cross corner. Bradley Galant's in on that one. Can't whack that one into the zone. Guara sends it up to Doyle at the point. Doyle can't feed it to the slot. That gets cut off by Reagan. Now here's Guara. Rink wide for Reagan. Left wing boards now for Sykes. Fed right back on. Tipped away. Mizio's pass, can't read the stick of Gallant. Dubecki wins that icing race. Puck's going to come back 200 feet, a minute 48 to go. So less than two minutes to go in the first period. This is just a heavyweight boxing, boxing match with two top five opponents against each other. Both of them feeling each other out most of the time. Both teams have had their opportunities, but neither have been able to find the back in the net. I, you can tell that both these teams are highly disciplined and they respect each other a lot on the ice. Definitely, Gildy. I mean, going to the heavyweight matchup, I mean, you, Vegas is known for their prize fights, their big-time boxing matches. And when you look at this one, it's very similar, as you said. It's first round, maybe. Gallant almost finding that one. He, he does, puts it on net, loose puck. Everyone jamming at it. Wakeland finds it, holds for a whistle, and we have some taps to the cage from Demizio to Duche. But continuing on, you see like the kind of light jabs, you know, like they're kind of feeling each other out, circling the ring, a few light jabs here and there, and then you might get one really strong cross or really strong like straight that connects, and that is kind of one of them. UC always had their fair share of them. Maybe expect the second period to kind of loosen up as these teams figure each other out. And also Duche, great job with discipline. He got face washed after the play, and he was able to keep his composure. There's Duche with the puck, feeds it on for Shura. Shura off the glass and out. Bouncing puck all the way down the length of the ice. Icing's waved off, Barry's there. Wax it up the ice, he gets it out of the zone. You know, he backs to recover once again. Here's Strong, lifts that one to the middle of the ice. Rand can't knife that one through. Played in their own zone. That's Kraus. Can't get it to Shura off the wall under a minute to go in the first. Here's Jackson White. Gains the red, sends it cross corner. Shura lifts that one off the glass, stopped up by Redman, who plays it for Hogan. Hogan plays it off the wall, whacks back up the ice. Wakeland plays it back up. Dalmonte can't get that one. Spun rink wide. And out of play. Creative play from Adam Stalzer, the senior from St. Charles, Illinois. A sort of Savardian spin to try and get that puck to the Moly Ice. Yeah, like Rebellion said last week, I feel like UCO is doing this week, be a little bit creative with it because you're playing against a very tough opponent here of UNLV. You got to be creative sometimes to be able to penetrate past this defense, especially when having all five back. Other than their one breakaway that resulted in a penalty for UNLV, not a lot of opportunities on the odd man rush for UCL. Opportunity for UNLV, Mason Kelly finding it, shooting one off the pad, rebound loose, Gallant can't put that one back on. Now here come the Broncos the other way with 20 to go. Fed to the slot, rung behind the net, Dubecki tries to put that one on, Mason Kelly whacks at that one with a very high stick. UCO touches up and we play on. Just a bit high. Now at the scorer's table, final few seconds, tick off. And there's a horn, and Davin Burton shooting one after the whistle. No one coming over to go talk to him, but regardless, after 20, no score. Yeah, no score, a lot of takeaways here. Last weekend, it was the referees that had to mitigate all the extracurricular activity, but tonight, it's been UCO that's been doing most of the work, not 
engaging with UNLV after the whistle. UNLV's had a lot of good opportunities, but just unable to find the back of the net. And then UCO, when they've been having their offensive opportunities, they've only had a couple shots, but they've been in really good high quality, Dom. High quality chances for UCO, lots of chances for UNLV. As you see on the scoreboard, UNLV leads by 10 in the shots department. More top five hockey just around the bend. Stay with us.
The Las Vegas Strip lit up here on this Friday night. No score after 20 minutes. Let's send it ringside with AJ Salas, or Zoe Reed and AJ Salas. We had a chance to talk to assistant coach Nick Raboni earlier in the week. He said, we have to get this crowd involved early. So far, the score is 0-0, but this crowd is waiting to erupt in the first goal. Let's see if they can make it happen. But for now, let's head over to Zoe Salas. Here with Tristan Rand. Tristan, you just finished the first period. What's going on with UCO that you weren't quite expecting? Um, they're definitely playing hard, getting a lot of pucks deep, and uh, I think we just need to get up, finish on all of our shots. We're having a lot of chances so far. How do you plan on getting the offensive end out there? Um, I think we got to get lower in the zone and uh, try to get out as quick as we can. Good luck to the next period. Thank you so much, Tristan. Okay. Dom and Ryan, let's get it back to you. And there you have it. Standing by with Tristan Ram with Zoe Salas. After 20, shots are 14 to four in favor of UNLV. One power play opportunity for each team here tonight. Neither team connecting. Some keys here for this middle period. UCO, just start getting shots. I mean, you're a good offensive team. If you start getting shots, something's gonna maybe go through and find its way through Vinny Benedetto. And for UNLV, just keep on shooting. And it's also going to be connecting because UNLV, they have 14 shots. They outshot UCO 14 to 4 in the first period. I just think for the second period, Dom, you got to start connecting. Connection will be key here in this middle period for both teams. It's a one bounce game, as we like to say here, Gildy. But it's expected between these two teams. They play a very similar style, they play very well against each other in all four games that they've played tight in all three games that I've watched. Very, very entertaining. So even strength at the top of the second here, starting lines for both teams are back out. Bradley Gallant and Cash Reagan dig in at the Golden Knights logo. We're back underway here at City National Arena. Puck played in the zone, scooped around, whacked back on net, blocked in front, and then played back into the zone. UCO gains the zone for the first time in this middle period. Kraus gets taken out, and then the net comes off its moorings. Vinny Benedetto puts it back on. We're going to play on. Here's Jason Demizio dropping it in, but it's blown dead for an offside. Surprising no whistle there after the net came off the bearings. I know that the puck kind of went away, went to UNLV's offensive zone, but the puck was still inside of UCO's offensive zone. When the bearings came up, I was quite surprised that there was no whistle when it came out. Didn't really have like a pressure. I mean, the play was coming the other way, so I guess the officials swallowed their whistle a little bit, let them keep playing. But all he needs is one bounce to go the other way, and I have a net without bearings. Yeah, I feel like they might have, they might stop the play, who knows? Seem weird things happen as a shooting attempt there's Negated puck fed out in front. Mikhailov, right in the blue paint, has a careen off his backhand. Caleb Strong touches it out, and here's Tristan Rand. One on four. Skates it, shooting one. Misses the net high and wide. Fed to the middle of the ice. Mikhailov has that pass go just behind him. Now here's Tristan Rand again. Rand cuts outside, dips the shoulder, driving the net, putting one on into the chest. Of Wakeland, and it'll hold for a whistle. Yeah, this is how UNLV can get a goal against UCO. It's going to be speed. They've been able to drive to the net and have some open shots. You saw Rand do it a couple times in the first period. Another opportunity there. And also Gallant almost got the shorthanded goal, but then got kind of whipped from behind, and it was a penalty on UCO. They drew the penalty from it. So speed, I think, is something that UNLV can use to their advantage tonight. We saw a lot in the first period. Let's see what they do in the second and third. Speed is key in today's game. I mean, hockey has undergone a great transition in the last decade, 10 years ago. If we have another icing call, UCO doesn't really like that when their bench is a little up and at them. And Duche skates by the official and is asking what the explanation of that call was. But continuing on, 10 years ago, Gildy was a much more physical game. You're an LA Kings fan. Those Kings teams that won the Stanley Cup back then pretty big burly teams now you have teams like the Edmonton Oilers Vegas Golden Knights 
what have you, playing a very speed-based game, and that's the key no matter what level you're at, even here in the ACHA. Puck skips free out to the slot, putting one on, and that gets turned aside. That was Justin Sothopoulos from the slot. Jake Berry whacks that puck right back into the zone. A pickpocket for Mench. Mench tries to feed it back for Kelly. Kelly picks it up below the goal line. He'll skate this one out, turns back into the slot. Kelly shooting one, blocked aside, loose puck. No one can get a stick on it. Mench gets tied up in behind and loses the puck. Now here come the Broncos playing it right back out. Puck out, gloved down by Barry at neutral or center ice. The play is blown dead. That was a bit of a quiet whistle there, Gildy. I didn't yeah, even hear I that one. I didn't hear the whistle. I think what dictated that a whistle was blown was just everyone just slowing down to slow motion. Like yeah, at everyone kind of standing up. Got 18.07 to go. Not a shot yet for either team. And we're not playing video games here. It's not like everyone's controllers just died out of nowhere. We're going to redo the face-off. Nick Flanders giving a shove there to Brandon McDonald. And they'll dig back in and try again and nothing else. Grant Smith leaves that one for Del Monte, who plays that one off the wall. Miscommunication leads to an icing call. No one was home there. Yeah, exactly what that was. There was miscommunication there because there was no one on that side of the ice even for the Skate Rebels. And Del Monte passed it just thinking that someone will pop open, someone will be there, but no one was there. So that's going to be a costly mistake there because UCO, they're going to get the face off with some fresh legs on uh, UNLV's defensive zone. They win the draw. Shot there from Burton blocked in front. Flanders can't play that one through on his backhand. LV gets the puck into the zone, but gets chopped right back out. Dalmonte pleaves that one for McCollum. McCollum shovels that one into the zone. Settled down and played back up. Guara plays it up for Reagan. Here's Cash Reagan shooting one, tipped up by McCollum, and Luke Burke takes a spill and loses his bucket. Yeah, now there's starting to be a little bit more tension after the whistle, like we said earlier. First period, both teams playing really disciplined. But then when you're in the heat of the moment in a close game like this, you're going to see some tempers flare on both sides. Even though UCO, their uh, coach Rivera was like, all right, we're going to make sure that we stay really disciplined. It's going to be really difficult to do that for all three periods against UNLV because tempers will spread. Bar shooting one into the pads of Benedetto. We have a, we have a mix-up. Out in front. Looks like Guara's on the bottom of that one. That was Nick Doyle coming in late. Talk about and higher Alec flaring. Johnson. Tempers did flare. Lo there was a loose puck to be completely fair as after that jam came in late. That was Nick Doyle who came in late on Guara it looks like. After he jammed that the pads of Benedetto, the puck came loose. Yeah, the, the puck came loose. I, In my opinion, I think that the whistle was blown a little bit early there. The play looked like it was still going. The whistle was blown, but the puck was loose. Doyle reacted, and it's going to be some four-on-four -four hockey. So tempers did flare there, and I don't totally blame that on both teams. They were playing after the whistle like the whistle wasn't even blown because – I don't feel like there was a reason for it to be blown. The puck did look loose. Four on four hockey, your favorite guilty. Here's Bradley Gallant. Gallant with speed up the right wing boards, plays that one in. Kyle Quinn bobbles the puck, plays it for Wyatt. He lets that one go. Doyle gets two for roughing, Guara gets two for a slash. Those are the official rulings in that skirmish. It's Kyle Quinn's going to take it up. Kyle Quinn doing it himself, pulls up. Feeds it rink wide that gets knocked away by Dubecki, and here's J.C. Dubecki. He springs Mikhailov. Mikhailov partial break, spins one. Back down for Mikhailov, one-time drive off the heel of his stick. Didn't get all of it. 
As the puck floats harmlessly into the corner. Mikhailov with another drive off the pad of Benedetto. Two back-to-back -back chances for Vitaly Mikhailov. A minute gone in this four-on-four -four period. Here's Rob McCollum. McCollum can't steer that one in. He gets pickpocketed. Down Monte. Settles the play down in his own end. Matias Dalmonte. Knife that one for McCollum. Pressure by St. Clair. Dalmonte. We have another stoppage of play. That was for Broker from below the goal line, putting one back on. And St. Clair ended up taking a spill out in front. 38 seconds to go on each penalty. 15-59. On the scoreboard here in the second period. This four on four play, Gildy's really kind of opened up the ice, but haven't really seen too many high octane chances. Yeah, I expected some more high octane chances, like you said, because the ice is open a little bit. It's hard to kind of hide away and dump the puck a little bit. You want to try to push it more because there's more open ice. Just haven't seen that from both these teams so far tonight. Jake Berry pushing the play, can't feed it rink wide, but it gets sent into the zone. Berry pinches, and now here comes UCO the other way, two on one. Here comes Rebroker. Rebroker tips the shoulder, puts one on, sticked away. Here's Shura. Artem Shura floats it back in for Rebroker. He loses his stick and gets pickpocketed by Alec Johnson. Johnson gets stood up. Cole Wyatt's there for the puck support. Now here's Cole Wyatt, final few seconds. Of the four on four period, back to post strength for Wolves. Johnson shooting one off the blocker of Wakelet. Puck settled down by Jackson Wyatt. Feeds it for Kyle Quinn, who sends that one into the zone. Quinn settles it down on his own end once again. Plays it softly for Wyatt. Left for Quinn. Can't get that one around. Kelly whacks it out of the zone. Krause plays it right back up, and that gets whacked in by Cash Reagan. Redmond forced to tag up. Delayed offsides on the Broncos, he does. There's Cash Reagan back in on the four check. Jackson White starting it out from below the goal line. Mason Kelly cuts inside. Now Kelly back outside, shooting one, misses the net wide. Kyle Quinn's there to settle it down at the point. Quinn back down low over the sick of Sothopolis. Heath Mitch will give chase. Jackson White picks it up. He and Mitch switch. Sethopoulos now feeds it to the center. Mench has it go off his stick. Sethopoulos plays it over for Quinn now. Quinn down low. Kelly knifes it on. Jackson Wyatt's there under pressure. Mench picks up a loose puck. Here's Heath Mench for Quinn. Quinn skating the line, loses an edge, feeds one on, loose puck in front. Seared away by Wakeland. McCollum sends that one right back in. Played to the slot off of a Loose stick shot there by Mason Kelly into the glove of Wakeland. He'll hold for a whistle, 13.47 to go in the second. There's some more opportunities for UNLV, but really good job by Wakeland making tough saves look really easy. The reason why they're really easy, just by positioning where he is at all times, making sure he has good vision. Because so far, Wakeland, he hasn't had too many really hard saves because he hasn't made it harder on himself than he needs to be. And all the guys in front of him playing well, allowing him to see most of the shots that he's faced tonight and make some key saves, keep this game tied. Broncos moving it up the ice. Here they come. Shot there from Stalzer, sticked into the protective netting by Benedetto. Benedetto, I don't know if he intended it to happen, but very good play, getting it out of play. That was one of those possessions where UNLV did not have all five back. It was more like a five on three when UCO got to their offensive zone. So Benedetto able to knock the puck out of play makes it now back to even strength. Even though it's only an odd man rush, you definitely want to prevent as many of those as possible from UCO. Glant St. Clair digging in. Glant wins that draw. McCollum can't wrestle that one away from a broker. The puck goes off the glass and out and the other two goaltenders for UCO. Artem Lantuck and Austin Maj almost stumbled backwards and fell on a bench trying to get out of the way. 
Touch through, here's Cooper Krause. Shooting one through traffic, blocked by the chest of Dalmonte, who flips it all the way up into the netting. Look how Rolando almost got nailed there. It's about oh. a foot away from his face. Now Rolando doing a great job moving the head back, had good <laughs> vision with the camera, but also having good vision for his own health. Moves back, able to avoid it. Taking a couple of deep breaths right now, shaking his head now, grasping on the net for dear life after that last play. But Rolando, good job up there, buddy. Gives us a smile, gives us a thumbs up. So he's good, a bit of a sigh of relief there. We joked about it before, Gildy, when we had to operate the camera in the Scarlet and Gray scrimmage last year that might have to throw a cage back on it. Maybe <laughs> we might have to get Rolando a cage up there. Yeah, I was going to wear my sister's softball helmet. <laughs> <laughs> Anything okay. to protect the chicklets. Here's Max Johnson, feeds it rink wide, almost gets it to Galan, who is going to the net back post. UCO gets the breakout going. Cash Reagan gets stood up by Doyle. Doyle takes a stick up high and loses his swig. Will play on. Now here's Alec Johnson. Alec Johnson through center, leaves it for his brother Max. Max turns away from pressure. He and Reagan collide. Alec Johnson gets stapled to the wall. Now here's Max Johnson again. Max Johnson feeding one rink wide. Can't get that one to Doyle. Puck whacked in by Mikhailov. Benedetto leaves it for Doyle. Doyle for Flanders. Flanders rink wide. Burke. Burke can't get it to Smith. Off the wall, Mikhailov can't chip it around. Barry. Barry tries to steer it back up. Grant Smith is there. Sends it up ice, and that's going to be spun in partially by Flanders. Now here's Jackson White in his own end. Wyatt up ice for Burke. Burke, rink wide feed. Shot there. Steered aside. A player goes careening into the net. That was Burke. Will play on. Chipped around. Redman can't corral the puck in the skates of Barry. He installs or go to work on the corner. Barry whacks it out of the zone. And Davin Burton to neutralize will recoil 11 minutes to go in the second period. Now Jackson gains the red and flips across corner. He'll get changed up. Fresh D pairing, the starting D pairing out there, Dalmonte and McCollum. Got a penalty upcoming, that's Mason Kelly. Looks like he's gonna be going for a trip. Tripped up Brandon McDonald. He and McDonald exchanging some words. Kelly getting escorted to the box. Yeah, McDonald just gained used to the hang of things here in the ACHA. One of the freshmen, and uh, Coach Rivera's talking about how he's learning. He's, he's one of those guys that's learning. And, hey, he drew a penalty. That's what UCO does better than any other team in the ACHA, and especially in the WCHL. They lead the WCHL in power play opportunities. They know how to draw penalties. That's the second one that they drew so far tonight. So UNLV to the penalty kill for the second time tonight. Tie hockey game, this power play for UCO is huge as Gallant sweeps it out of the zone to get things started. Here comes UCO. It's Duche, gains the red, can't flip it into the zone. Duche right in front of us. Doing battle with Gallant. Gallant. Wax that one up ice. Here's J.C. Dubecki. Dubecki shooting one through traffic. Blocks out in front. Galant can't get there, but Quinn does and sends it out of the zone once again. 40 seconds gone on the PK for the Rebels. Here comes UNLV again. That's Hogan. Left that one. Flanders can't find the puck. Now he does. Can't stick it out. Flanders juggling the puck there. Can't get it out of the zone. Here they come. Centering pass. Broken up by the diving stick of Doyle. Loose puck in the blue paint. And it's held for a whistle. More sticks come up and some extra shoving. It's Cash Reagan and Kyle Quinn getting their dukes up. That was an interesting play. Flanders playing a little bit of hot potato with the puck. 
kind of counted about it three up. times. He whacks that thing out of midair. He tried to clear it, just was unable to, and it almost cost them as the puck kind of bounced over near the crease, and Benedetto was able to take care of business over there. One of the more wacky penalty kill sequences that we've seen this year. Definitely very weird. The everyone getting back in an orderly shape. Vinny Benedetto had his water bottle knocked off, so he had to put it back where he likes it. Faceoff's gonna come out to his left. A puck goes through the wickets of Davin Burton. Flanders will do battle with him. Burton and Flanders go down. We'll play on. Cash Reagan will go behind his own cage and serve in the ice. Sam Sykes floats it back in. Cash Reagan took a run at McCollum. He took a spill behind the play. No call. We'll play on. Now McCollum back up. Wax that one. Sykes takes a run at him. And Sykes gets sent to the ice emphatically by McCollum. McCollum not pleased with anything wearing yellow right now. We'll play on still. Dalmonte gets that one wrestled away. Kraus shoots one. Gets sticked away by McCollum. Now Kraus again, under 10 to go. Guara down low for Reagan. That goes off his stick. Dalmonte sweeps it around. A diving Sykes. Here's Burton. Burton gets bumped by Galant. Now here's Matias Dalmonte. Back to full strength for UNLV. Dalmonte. Look at Dalmonte moving on in. Tries to feed it. Can't get there. Another shot into the chest of Wakeland. And he'll hold for a whistle. A great chance for UNLV there, Gildy. Three on one, but everyone's just out of gas. Great chance. you got to get a better opportunity off of that. I feel like it's a three on one opportunity. you got UCO on their heels. I just don't like the opportunity that they got at the end. I don't feel like they, I feel like they could have gotten a better scoring opportunity. If they put on a better shot and it got saved by Wakeland, good save by Wakeland. But I don't feel like the shot quality was good enough there for the opportunity that they had. I mean, the, the penalty killer is out of gas for the most part. But again, like three on one, three on two-ish. Dalmonte waited, but great puck support from a UNLV. Just getting back to full strength. Crash in the net no matter what. There was a loose puck. You get a second chance opportunity. Bounces are huge in this game right now. Dubecki floats it off the glass, gloved down by Kelly. Now Kelly on the left wing boards, gets that poked away. Barry can't dance through. And now here's St. Clair. Jamison St. Clair feeds it rink wide for Duche. Sebastian Duche tries to feed it to the slot for Robbie Rebroker. Can't find him. Now here's Mason Kelly. Kelly now up ice. Gains the left wing. Gets stapled to the wall by Dubecki. Kelly's still down low, working it free. Plays it off the wall for Jake Berry. Berry rink wide for Doyle. Doyle down low. Kelly steers it back down. Sethopoulos is on that. Sethopoulos plays it up. That puck gets tipped away. And here's Robert. Rebroker gets leveled at the blue line by Doyle. Now here's Tristan Rand. Rand moving on in, down low. Moves it up for Doyle. Doyle looking, shooting one. Steered away. Now Alec Johnson plays that down low. Rand gets that puck. Rand shooting one on Angle off the shoulder. Strong picks this one up. Leaves it for Johnson. Touch back, back to Strong. Strong looking. Rink wide feed. Shot there. Missing the net. Alex Johnson feeds it to the slot again. Tipped away. And Nick Doyle is going to recoil and send it back in from the red line. Cole Wyatt was the one who missed the net there on that last opportunity. He's back in. Tries to feed it to the goal mouth. That gets tipped away. And here's Matias Dalmonte. Down low for Strong. Strong spins that one for Rand. Rand gets Prince to get the wall and canceled out. Dubecki's in on that in the corner. They're still doing battle out there in the corner. UNLV getting some fresh legs on. Dalmonte engaged in the, on the half wall. Strong gets changed up. Gaunt hops on for him. Here's McCollum from the corner. Plays that one on. Gallant gets it on that one. Big hit by Gallant. Gallant gets that loose puck, touches it for Dalmonte. Dalmonte 
to D for McCollum. McCollum from the left point, shooting one. Seared away. Now here's Max Johnson. Johnson now loses that puck. Del Monte gets a touch around him. And now here come the Broncos again. Dip on the shoulder. Max Johnson sends Mondi to the ice emphatically. Then Redmond sends Gallant to the ice. A couple of big hits back and forth. Physicality is starting to pick up. Now Monte gets that one touched away from him. McCollum steers it away from harm's way. And now here's Grant Smith. Smith. Can't play that through. In the corner, UNLV going back to work. UCO starting it out again. Burton sends it in. Mikhailov plays that one deeper. Jackson Wyatt. These are for Flanders. Flanders gets tripped up. Delay a penalty. That's going to be Vitaly Mikhailov. Flanders is going to leave that for Jackson Wyatt. Extra attackers on for UNLV. Jackson Wyatt gets tripped up himself. Looks like we might have two penalties coming up. One trip pointed out. So are we going to get another one? We're going to have to wait and see here, Gildy. What a sequence of events. I was about to say... You don't mean they need to get a puck to go out of play. They need to reset. There was too many possessions that UCO was having odd man rushes. The defense wasn't set correctly. They need to reset a little bit. But then, now there's going to be a power play for UNLV. And quite honestly, there should be two. I mean, there should be a um, five on three. They're only going to give one, it looks like. But Jackson White was pretty clearly tripped. Yeah, you saw him from his knees for a brief moment. He... Looked over to the official and he held up two fingers. He's like, we're going to get two? And they don't get two. UNLV gets their second look on the power play. Vitaly Mikhailov going for tripping. Now Matias Del Monte working it, moving on in. Tries to dance through traffic. He keeps possession of that puck, leaves it for Cole Wyatt. Now here's Wyatt. Plays it back up for Del Monte. Del Monte shooting one through traffic. That gets directed wide. Here's Jackson Wyatt. Skating the line. Jackson tries to put one on. Tipped on net. Loose puck for Del Monte. He'll settle down play. And feed that down low. Here's Cole Wyatt looking. Cole Wyatt moving on in from the dot. Feeds one rink wide. Shot there by Gallant. Big save by Wakeland. What an effort as he sprawls out post to post to make that save. And Wakeland looks a little slow getting up. And he gets a few stick taps and we're gonna wait for Wakeland to stand back up on his two feet. Yeah, Lakeland deserves all the stick taps that he gets from that UCO bench. Putting his body on the line on the penalty kill there. Really good job. They're eliminating the threat there. Wow. This Lakeland all night. Even though you don't be at the 24 to 11 shot advantage, Lakeland, he's been putting his team on his back. Looked like he might have tweaked his knee there. But he's back up. We'll continue on about a minute to go on the UNLV power play. Here's McCollum for Strong down low. Then for Johnson, Johnson in tight. His shot gets smothered by Wakeland. 58 seconds to go on the power play. Now, UNLV, they got to do what they said against Arizona State. They got to get a little bit creative because they try to go the generic route, and Wakeland has, uh, Lake, Lakeland has no lanes that are open. There's really nothing that you can really score on by. He's been protecting the five hole. He's been very good with not allowing with his angle that he's been showing. Not allowing UNLV to get an open part of the net. They got to be a little bit creative, UNLV. McCollum's shot. Blocker saved by Wakeland. Turn back on. Blocked in front. Loose puck at the goal mouth. Ryan ran racks at it. And that got steered aside. Benedetto stops that puck up. Final half minute upcoming on the UNLV power play. McCollum for Mench. Mench for Rand, Rand driving that, shooting one! Directed to the netting, and we have another stoppage of play. UNLV lately, Gildy, has really been playing pretty well. They've been getting a lot of zone time, getting a lot of shots, but Doug Wakeland, what an effort in the blue paint. 
UNLV is playing great right now. I feel like they're doing a good job in their offensive zone. Doug Wakeland's playing excellent. So UNLV, they got to create an excellent play to get it past Wakeland because so far there's been no answer. No answer just yet. For UNLV, they're going to keep trying. Cole Wyatt sends it in. Shot there and tight by Galan. That gets steered away. UCO back to full strength. Fed in tight. One time drive by Wyatt. Shot blocked in front. Another strong shot blocking effort from the Broncos. Now here's Max Johnson up top for Barry. Barry shooting one through traffic. Tipped just wide. Fed back out to the slide. Almost jammed on by Cole Wyatt. It doesn't make it on net. Now the Broncos come the other way and send it into the zone. Here's Guara. Guara down low under pressure from Barry. Spins it back in. Jackson Wyatt chops at it on the glass through Sam Sykes. Stopped up at the point. Here's Sam Sykes again. For Guara shooting one off the end wall and around for Dubecki who sends it back in. There's Guara below the goal line. Feeds it for Sykes. Good shot there from Reagan. A big save by Vinny Benedetto. Cash Reagan with a one-time drive from the slot. But Benedetto, right place, right time. And that's their starting line. That's the line right there that's been producing the most points for them this season. Almost 30 so far since the, since the winter break. And that, that was just another opportunity there. But Vinny Benedetto stepping up as well. We got to give him some stick taps as well on the broadcast. A goaltending battle here so far. About 38 minutes into this one. As Burt picks his puck up in stride, he'll go up the right wing and cut inside as he floats it in. That doesn't get past the UCO defense. Alec Johnson gloves that puck down, sends it rink wide again. Burke knifes that one in. Two legs, Burke driving the net. Can't get there, loose puck. Gets sent out of the zone by the Broncos. There's Nick Doyle. Chipped in by Burke, here's Heath Mench. Mench feeds it for Doyle, that hops over his stick. Flanders, can't play that one through. Now here comes Stalzer, Stalzer shooting one. Good stick by Doyle. That puck gets deflected out of play. Yeah, Doyle ever since his debut against Minot has brought such a big defensive presence. I know it's his job as a defenseman, but he's been doing a really good job blocking a lot of shots, flipping the possession over the UNLV a lot so far in the spring semester. And Nick Doyle was a forward at Minot State, which yes. is just quite the transition going from forward to defenseman. It's a different play style. You have to skate different. Conditioning is different. Doyle is doing just fine here in the spring semester since his debut against Minot State. Faceoffs won by Bradley Gallant. Final minute in the second period. Fed to the slot. Shot there by St. Clair. Doesn't make it on net. Now here's Justin Sethopoulos. Sethopoulos, one on three. Cuts outside. Sethopoulos driving in. Driving shooting one save made by Wakeland. Justin Sethopoulos with a great chance to score his second goal of the season. Didn't get all the shot and Wakeland staying soft. What a great job there by Sethopoulos even to get there. It's like you ever played Mario? He had the, the, the star power up, do you want to say? Or no, like the gonna, orange mushroom? I was going to say, he made it all the way to the end of the world. He got the Bowser's Castle. And that's the Lakeland <laughs> tonight. Just couldn't get past that obstacle. But really good job making it through all the other levels. Going one on three. One black jersey skating through four or three. Yellow. But he can't get there. Here's Bradley Glott in the final 30. Right wing for Demizio. Shooting one. Tipped wide. Whacked on by Johnson. Skips through the slot. Delmonte settles it down. Final 20. Shooting one. Misses the net wide. Final 15. Fed up for Demizio. Shooting one. Blocked out in front again. Every single yellow jersey just sprawling out trying to block some shots. And Ron McCollum behind his own cage. He'll just let this period end. Tries to fake out. Robbie Rebroker there. Good old fashioned. Keith Yandel Sounk didn't really work there, Gildy. No, just Doug Wakeland. I, that's all I want to freaking talk about. <laughs> wow. Phenomenal effort and goal for him. It's a goal-setting battle, as I mentioned, but Doug Wakeland making 
save after save when he needs to. Just unbelievable performance so far. And for UNLV, here's going to be my key. Number one, use your speed to get the puck over to your offensive zone. And the other key is going to be cause traffic near the net. you got to get him to feel uncomfortable. So you get Lakeland uncomfortable through getting the puck over there with speed and then causing traffic, then get a lane to score. Those are, those are the three keys to score a goal. We'll see if those keys will prevail in the third period. A quick break after 40. We're still knotted up at zeros. Stay with us.
The Las Vegas Strip lit up here on this Friday night. Start of the third period, still all tied up at zeros. Let's go ahead and send it ringside one more time with Zoe Salas and AJ Reed. Thank you, Rob. Thank you. Dom and Ryan, back to you guys. Earlier this week, we got to speak to assistant coach Nick Raboni. He said, the biggest thing for us is discipline. If we aren't a disciplined group, then we aren't going to hit the goals that we set for this season. Now, the UCO Broncos have been lethal on the power play. As of right now, they're 0-2. Let's see if the Rebels can stay out of the box for the rest of this one. Now, let's head it over to A.J. Reid. Join here with Robert McCollum. Rob, 0-0 game so far. What do you guys need to do to break through? We need to stick to our game. It's coming. We've had a lot of great A scoring chances. I guess it's just one of those nights we're not getting too much puck luck, but if we keep at it, one's going to come for us here shortly. What do you have to say about your goaltender, Vinny, tonight? Standing on his head. Uh, he's holding us in there. We need to do our job for him now this third period. Thank you, Rob. Thank you. Dom and Ryan, back to you guys. And there you have it. A bumpy 20 minutes left here to go through 40. UNLV owns the shot department 29 to 12. Neither team's connected on the power play as it's still 0-0 zero to zero and some keys here. UNLV's just got to solve Doug Wakeland. And UCO just needs to get a favorable balance. They got a few in that second period. Yeah, I think that UCO's got to keep doing what they're doing. They got to score with that starting line. That's what's carried them so far in the spring. I feel like that's what they need against UNLV. They've exploded sometimes this semester even against Colorado State. It was a tie game going to the third period on... Uh, Saturday's game and they were able to win. It was a big win for them. They won by five goals at the end. So uh, This team they could they could have a really good period So don't just think that UCO they're not gonna score tonight. They could score. They could have a big period still You know be working in the zone early. Golan feeds it up for Del Monte. Del Monte shooting one through traffic. Big pad saved by Wakeland That gets lifted out of the zone by Cash Reagan down the length of the ice for an icing just 30 seconds into this third period. I feel like you gotta do all three. You gotta get the speed and you gotta cause the traffic to get that third one the goal. I feel like there was traffic, there was a shot, but I feel like Lakeland does a really good job of deflecting the traffic, gaining the vision that he needs and able to make the save there. I feel like you gotta get some speed, gotta get near him. Get, you, don't, you don't wanna shoot it from far away from him, from the blue line. Basically, he wins the draw of Sothopolis with a shot off the knob of the stick. For Wakeland. Stopless nice set for Kelly. Plays it down low for Mench. Mench waits. Rink wide be chopped down by Guara. Mason Kelly down low now. Here's Mench. Gets muscled off the puck by Shura. Mark McCollum misses a hit on Guara. We got a player down at center ice. Looks like McCollum. But we'll play on. Puck skips free to center. Eplin can't send that one in. Now you know he will recoil on their own end. Now here's DCO with their first zone time of the period. Mikhailov who floated it in. Loose puck picked up by Caleb Strong. He'll start this one out. Strong cuts in the middle of the ice. Eplin touches that on for Dubecki. Dubecki just sends this one cross corner. St. Clair gets in on that. Pressures Doyle. Now Tristan Rand takes a chop. He'll skate on. Cuts outside. Davin Burton sweeps that puck away from him. Now here's St. Clair. St. Clair pressured by Jackson Wyatt. Pickbox him, Vert with a one-time drive directed to the high glass and in the netting for a whistle. I like that for there by Rand trying to create some separation using his speed, unable to get past the Broncos defense there. The fact that this game's knotted up at zero still guilty is kind of it's surprising. crazy to me, honestly, because we haven't really seen many games like this this season, last season even.
but it still goes to show about the skill level of both of these teams, the fact that they can play such a tight hockey game. And the goaltending especially, that's one aspect of hockey that gets left out every now and again, but it's been a goaltending battle. You heard Rob McCollum in the intermission interview, he simply said, the key for a win tonight is to have Vinny to keep standing on his expletive head. <laughs> That's a new one there. Is <laughs> We have another stoppage of play. We haven't had that kind of profanity in an interview or anything like that this season, but obviously Rob McCollum's but fired up. It's the true emotion, Dom. <laughs> Raw emotion. That's evoked from playing hockey, a very emotional and physical game. As Bradley Gallant digs in against Brandon McDonald just outside the UNLV defensive zone. McDonald jumps to draw. They're going to have to redo. And that draw is run one by Gallant. Demizio gets taken down by Redman. Demizio with the puck once more. Tries to feed it. To Gallant. Gallant gets there anyway. He spins that one into the zone. Rob McCollum pinches. Forces it down low. Demizio off the pad. Here's McCollum shooting one. Looks like it went off the shin pad of Kraus. And here's Del Monte. Del Monte gets that one chopped away by Mondi. And here, here's Cooper Kraus three on one. Kraus for Redman. Redman toe drag gets that one blocked away by McCollum. Spun back on. And through the blue paint to the half wall. Picked up by Gallant. Gallant sends us an off the chest of Wakeland. And here's J.C. Dubecki. Dubecki flips this one. Settled down by Doyle. Tipped in by Smith. Dubecki back on that one. It's chopped at by Smith. They're doing battle right next to our broadcast table. Cash Reagan from below the goal line. Played it up. Flanders back down low for Burke. Luke Burke gets that chopped away by Dubecki. And now here's Cash Reagan up the right side of the ice. He's it up for Sykes. Sykes gets that one taken away by Alec Johnson. Now here's Alec Johnson moving on in. Steers it towards the net. Men shooting one. Tipped by the stick of Reagan on net. Wakeland holds for a whistle. Yeah, good defense there by Reagan. Limiting the shot there. Took away some of the power and allowed... Wakeland to get into position. He was already in position, but just have him field it like a ground ball. Covered up for a whistle. Offensive zone draw for UNLV. Sebastian St. Clair and Mason Kelly digging in. Face off one by Kelly. Mikhailov sends that one out of play. Again, this the UCO bench has been a puck magnet today. Yeah. Really has maybe too much metal over there. Maybe there's there's some magnetism going over there because it seems like every time the puck's going out of play, it's going to UCO's bench, but not at all to UNLV. Lots of players in yellow, the coaching staff behind the bench and the athletic staff and equipment staff even having to duck out of the way as we play on. Now here's Mikhailov, gains his own. Vitaly Mikhailov. Shooting one, steered away by the paddle. Benedetto fed right back on net. Played down below the goal line now. There's Sathopoulos, touches that one on. Kelly can't get there, but here's Mench. Mench for Jackson Wyatt. Wyatt around the horn for Kelly. Kelly gets pickpocketed by Davin Burton, who whacks that one. Settled down by Damonte. Damonte shooting one, misses the net wide. Try to go blocker. Sathopoulos tips that one in for Mench. Mensch skating it out, feeds it to the slot. Sathopoulos can't put that one back on. There's a hole, but he couldn't find it. There's Jackson White stepping in, shooting one, trying to get it to the stick of Kelly, but couldn't get there. Mensch with a pick on that pass. Now here's Kelly. Mason Kelly shooting one into the chest of Wakeland. No hold for another whistle. UNLV just peppering Doug Wakeland tonight. And that's what you got to do. You just got to pepper him with shots, even though they might not be the best opportunities. Just get the puck near the net. Hope that something good happens. So far, Lakeland hasn't let anything good happen for the Skane Rebels. But like I said, really got to get the puck close to the net. That was what Kelly was trying to do there and try to get a rebound opportunity. Face off one by Colin Hogan. 
UCO's going to try and get this puck out. Cole Wyatt's body blocks that clearing attempt from Cooper Krause, who picks it off the dash. Krause steers it off the wall and out, but it gets as far as the red. McCollum swings it for Dalmonte. Dalmonte's pass is tipped into the zone. Krause is in on that one. Plays it around. Rand's there. Sends it right back in. Now here's Strong. Dalmonte with a shot there. Tipped down in front. Rebound chance for Wyatt. That flutters over the net to the slot. Now here's Dalmonte stepping in. Shooting one off the post. And out of play. Cole Wyatt can't believe it. The rebound chance on the doorstep just flutters over the cage. And the Matias Dalmonte from the high slot rings it off the post. And we're still tied at nothing. When Wakely can't get it, the Irons got his back tonight. Wow, a couple of opportunities going off the Irons. And also, the first period remembers Stephopoulos. I almost got my first goal call <laughs> for the Skating Rebels there. And he hit the post as well. So, Lakeland, he's been doing a great job, but also the net has been by his side. Wakeland might be thanking his lucky lucky stars of that those two pucks didn't go in as Alec Johnson feeds another one towards the net. Gets tipped away. And here's Nick Doyle. Doyle stepping in, shooting one, blocked by Guara. Demizio turns one on, knocked down in front, shot there by Johnson, another save by Wakelin. Max Johnson doing battle below the goal line. Bradley Glant picks it away. There's here's Doyle, swings it for Alec. Alec pumps, cuts outside. Alec Johnson looking now, shooting one. Tipped away, Doyle pinches, whacks another one on net, tipped wide again. And now here's Cash Reagan sprung. Cash Reagan moving on in, tries to get it on the backhand. Good stick check from Alec Johnson, who sends him into the end wall emphatically. Great effort by the captain on the back check. A couple big hits. Here's Reagan again, shooting one, misses the net wide. Do Becky. To the half wall, and that's spun in. UCO with possession now. Fed up to the high slot. Then steered in. UCO still with possession. Lots of tired legs out there for UNLV. Fed to the slot. Gallant clears the slot, sends it off the glass and out of the zone. Now here's Jackson White, fresh off the bench, beats out the icing race. Good effort from the sophomore defenseman. White gets taken down, fed to the goal mouth. And Grant Smith gets sent into the cage by Brandon McDonald as Wakeland finds the loose puck and holds for a whistle. UNLV is coming ever so close. Great job by Jackson Wyatt there. I mean, no the matter hustle. what, the hustle, the, it, it waved off the, uh, the offsides, and now they get an offensive zone faceoff. But Lakeland, he was using his hand, not the glove hand, he used the hand that was holding onto the stick to cover the puck and freeze it. UNLV just so close to breaking through, yet so far. Faceoffs one to Burke, touches that on for White. White shooting one, tipped by the stick of Flanders. Barry gets knocked to the ice by Burton. Flanders down low, feeds it to the slot, and that puck skips out of the zone, way back to Vinny Benedetto with under 12 and a half to go. He'll just touch that for Jake Barry, who's going to quarterback this rush. Loose puck gets directed back in by Mondi. Played back around the wall. There's Burke on that. Flanders. Plays it for Jackson Wyatt. Jackson Wyatt swings it out to the left wing for Barry. Barry sends it in off the cuff of the glove for Wakeland, who will just hold for a whistle. And another offensive zone draw up coming for UNLV. This is entertaining, Dom. Picked this up, Gildy. Yeah, it picked up. The goals haven't picked up, but the shots on goal have picked up. UNLV right now is at 36 shots on net. How many goals do you think they'll normally get them? Four, five? Maybe three, three to five in that three range, is typically. Too, and to have zero and they haven't had all bad shots sure I would say about half of them are probably give me opportunities but the other half some really good opportunities that have been saved by Wakeland puck skips free McCollum sends it off the glass and off a skate and now here's Mench can't kick that to his own stick blade then went off of Dubecky skate you know, he's still in their own zone. Directing that up. Plays cut off by Mench. You know, he touches up. Mench feeds it for Sothopolis. Sothopolis shooting one off the shoulder and fielded perfectly by Wakeland. 
for another whistle. He's dialed in tonight. So comfortable. Like, just shrugged it off and just finds it. Let's it sit right there in his glove. How many players can shrug a puck off their shoulder, have it pop up with the with defenders and with people playing on offense for UNLV, going right near it and just catching it with his left hand? I think that was a pretty remarkable play there. Not going to show up in the stat book, but I think it's a pretty remarkable play being able to free that puck, catching it off the shoulder. Based off one by Kelly. It's going to be fed back in. Kelly doing battle with Shura. UNLV keeping the zone so far. Shura lifts it off the glass and out. Bouncing puck. Settled down by Doyle. Doyle rings it around. Touched on. Now Shura sends that off the wall and into the zone. That gets touched by Stathopoulos. He'll get changed up. Artem Shura under pressure from Mason Kelly. He'll reverse that for Cooper Krause. Krause up ice. But now here's Max Johnson. Johnson looking. Here's Galan. Galan. Deacon around, loses it in skates, trying to get around Davin Burton, but he keeps possession. Now Demizio, Demizio shooting one, misses the net wide. Now Jackson Wyatt keeps the zone with his offhand on his stick, spinning out of the zone. He gets chased out there by Duche. Now Demizio tips that one in. And here's Dubecki. UCO almost gains the zone, touched on. Gallant gets knocked down by Burton. Now here's Sam Sykes. Sykes up ice for Reagan. Reagan floats it in. Officially halfway through this third period. Now here's Tristan Rand. Rand sends it up, picked off by Cooper Krause. Krause back up off the skate of Sykes. Strong floats it off to himself, and I hear Strong dip in the shoulder, driving that. Strong shooting one off the crossbar. Caleb Strong with the individual effort. Can't beat the iron once again. As that puck's floated back in. Now Rand. Now here's Cash Reagan sidestepping Nick Flanders. Now here's Reagan, head man in this rush. Reagan can't work it to the left wing. His man took a spill. Now Cole White has that go through his wickets. Icing's waved off. Here's Mondi. Mondi off the glass and into the zone. UNLV coming the other way. Grant Smith, left wing for Flanders. Flanders moving on in. Centering pass. Tipped away by Artem Shura. Mondi around the wall. Grant Smith's there. Plays it back in. Off the skate of Flanders. Flanders plays it back for Smith. Smith shooting one off the blocker of Wakeland. Doyle stops it up. Saucer pass for Smith. Touches that for Flanders. Flanders between the legs. Gets canceled out. Off the glass and out. That was Williams. Settled down. And played back up. Tipped in by Luke Burke. Will get changed up. J.C. Dubecki. Back to recover. Here he comes. Up ice for Mikhailov, shooting one. Off the glove, fed back on net. Looked like it went off the side of the cage. Stopped up at the point by Dubecki, chopped that at the half wall. Now fed back down low. Then sent back up, only gets as far as the red. Jackson Wyatt almost misplays the puck. Fed back out to the goal mouth. Loose puck directed aside. Now here's Dubecki. Feeds it to the slot. Can't get there. Whacked back on that. Blocked in front and kicked to his stick. That's Kelly. Kelly gets stripped up. Sent over for Stathopoulos. Stathopoulos driving the net. Gets canceled out. He'll take it around the horn. Centering pass. No one home. Damonte bobbles the puck. Takes it down low. Damonte tries to whack it to the slot. Directed aside. Now Davin Burton trying to get it started out under siege from Kelly. Burton. Plays it off the chest of Max Johnson. Kept it in for some time. Can't keep it there still. And now here comes Oklahoma. Here's Holgan. Played it there for Duche, but it's blown dead for an offside. It's quite the pace there since that last wow. stoppage. A lot to take in there. UCO, I mean, one thing I got to say is you got to produce some more offense. You got to produce get a lot more, more shots. Because think about it on, on the goal. flip side. If they're able to produce 35 shots right now versus UNLV to 17. I don't think that's what the score looked like. 
how it does right now. No, I think maybe they might be able to break through on a couple, but I mean, Vinny Benedetto on those 14 shots that he's faced so far, he's just absolutely yeah. dialed in. I think what Wakeland's also done is put the pressure on Vinny Benedetto as well because it puts him under stress. Like, oh my goodness, I, it's almost like I, I have to make the save more than Wakeland's. Like, I've given up, I've had 40 shots where it's a little bit different. Puts the pressure on Benedetto to make more saves. Max Johnson has that puck directed away from him. That was Demizio trying to find him. Here's Alex Johnson cutting to the side. Alex Johnson turning the backhander on wide of the net. Now Max looking. Max Johnson feeds it to the slot. Carroll's on himself. Shot blocked in front. Sticks come up again, but good effort from Cullen Hogan going on one knee to get in front of that Max Johnson backhander. So a really good opportunity yet again for UNLV, just unable to find the back end of that. That's been the story of the whole night. They're edging right around 40 shots tonight, still unable to find the back end of that. And I would say the last five minutes, all been great opportunities. Just, just off or hits the post. Four times the puck has hit the post. Not the outside of the post, but the middle or inside the post tonight. The puck just doesn't seem like it wants to go for UNLV, six minutes and 40 seconds to go in this third period. We're still tied at zeros. Here's Heath Mensch directs that for Stathopoulos. He loses an edge and lays the body on Dubecki as he sends it in. Benedetto is out behind to stop it. Mensch spins away from pressure, cut off, sent back in, but Mensch picks up the loose puck once again. Directed to the Right wing, Sophopoulos knocks it in. Wakeland leaves that. Eplin around for Dubecki. That gets sent in. Quinn finds it and sends it right back cross corner. Fresh legs coming on for UNLV. Now under six to go. Dubecki. Leaves that for McDonald. McDonald sends that one up ice. That's picked off. Now here's Cole Wyatt on the right wing. Cole Wyatt sends it to the middle. Strong tries to direct it on. Can't get there. McCollum pinches. Sends it into the zone. Doesn't get past Davin Burton. And here's Burton. Turns it over. Wyatt kicking it to himself. Loose puck in front. Can't get there. That was Rand, excuse me, trying to kick it to his stick. Now Rand. Can't play that one through. J.C. Dubecki around the official. Now Redman gets sent to the ice by Rand. Cole Wyatt touches up here strong. Off the wall, Wyatt down low. Caleb Strong again gets stick lifted by Dubecki. Plays it on and that gets lifted high almost into the lights at City National Arena by Davin Burton. Now here's Cole Wyatt coming right back. Wyatt moving on in. Delayed penalty shooting one. Looks like it was out of play. Too many men on Central Oklahoma. And now UNLV with an opportunity on the power play with 4.48 to go. This is the biggest momentum shift of the game here. If UNLV is able to score here on this power play, it will give you a lead with under five minutes to go. If UNLV is unable to score, all the confidence I feel like will shift more to UCL because They'll feel like you can't score on them. There's no way you get past them. So big power play here for UNLV. And it, and it could very well decide the game. Max Johnson, Bradley Glock, Cole Wyatt, Jackson Wyatt, and Matias Dalmonte, the power play unit. And the puck skips free in UNLV zone zone. And UCO trying to get after it. Cole Wyatt waits, flips it off the wall. Gallant can't get there. Cooper Krause sends it right back up. Here comes UNLV starting it out. 30 seconds gone on the man advantage. Damonte swings it into the zone. Jackson Wyatt gets that puck at the point. Now back over to Damonte for Jackson. Touches it to Cole. Cole tries to feed it through traffic. But Guara sends it out and he'll give chase. Damonte now with time and space. Touched on for Cole Wyatt. Cole 
for Max. Max Johnson moving on in. Tries to drop it back for Cole. Davin Burton's there to send it right back out. Over a minute gone on the main advantage for the Skate Rebels. And here's McCollum for Alec Johnson. Now Tristan Rand up the left wing. Rand looking. Drop pass for Strong. Strong pulls up. Strong looking. Shooting one. Tipped up to the high glass by Hogan. Touched on by Mensch. Here's McCollum at the point. McCollum can't work it back to Mensch. Good stick there by Duchesne. Strong in his skates. Final 30. Rand. Can't play that through. UNLV stopped up, stuck in the mud of the neutral zone. But now they finally get it out. Here's Alec Johnson in the final 15. Alec Johnson from the half wall, down low for Mensch. Mensch looking from the corner, up ice for Quinn. Back down low, Mensch. Mensch from the half wall now. He'll look again. Quinn at the top. Now Strong, Strong moving on. And toe drag shot, rebound, kicks out almost to Alec Johnson. But no joy. Quinn gloves it down, keeps the zone somewhat, but it skips free. UCO survives the PK. Now here's Tristan Rand with UCO back to full strength. Rand cutting and shooting one. Misses it wide. Down low for Alex Johnson. Feeding it to the slot. To Becky with a good stick to break that play up. Now here's Duchette. S sends it in. You know, be in their own end. Trying to get a control breakout here. UCO getting some fresh legs out there right in front of your TV screen. Quinn nice and on. Sent in by Burke. Here's Jason Demizio. Whoop. Wakeland came way out to play that one. He succeeded. That's sent in by Barry. Under two minutes to go in this third period. Here's Shura. Artem Shura. Still behind his own net. Turn away from pressure. Left that for Sam Sykes. Top line out there for UCO, 90 seconds to go. Shara gets tied up but feeds it over for Kraus. Kraus nice and into the zone. Played around. Sticked over by Wyatt to neutralize. Settled down by Kraus who shovels that right back into the zone. Now Davin Burton is on blue line. One minute to go in the third period. Now here comes Sykes. Sykes moving on and shooting one. Save made Benedetto. Loose puck and they score. It trickles in. Sam Sykes breaks through for the Broncos with 53 seconds to go. You need a guy to flip the momentum. And Sam Sykes, he has the most points in the WCHL right now of 41. That makes it 42. And that one line right there, including Sykes, that's where most of the goals have come in this spring semester. You know he's going to take a timeout. they got to regroup. The first 41 shots haven't been enough. they got to get a shot to find the back of the net in the next 53.2 seconds. Well, Gildy, goal scorers score goals. And that's what Sam Sykes just did, leading the WCHL in points. Leading the Broncos in points, leading the Broncos in goal scoring, what have you. That's what you want to see from your top line. And that's the exact reason why Mike Rivera sent them out there in crunch time. To score those late goals, those gritty goals. And just get the job done. Just a crit, because you, anyone that's listening, every, anyone that's watching can all agree. UNLV has outplayed UCO in mostly this entire game. But that one shot by uh, Sykes could give them the win over here for UCO. So, you know, they're going to do everything they can to try to find the back of the net here. First 41 shots are successful, but it only takes one to find the back of the net. A one-bounce game turned into a two-bounce game for right now. If you're UNLV, 45 to go. Vinny Benedetto out of the cage, six Skaters on for UNLV with the empty net. Here's Alex Johnson shooting one tipped on to the high glass. There is Gallant. Alec Johnson wrestles it away. Here's Del Monte shooting one 
tipped away. Now here's Sam Sykes again. Works it up for Guara. Guara gains the red, feeds it across. And Sam Sykes buries the empty net goal. And Sam Sykes barking at the UNLV bench as he skates by. Two goals for the goal scorer on the UCO Broncos. 20 seconds to go, and that could be all she wrote. And most likely it will. I mean, the UCO had a bend, but don't break. And they and they bent like a really good rubber band. They, they didn't they break at all. They bent a lot here tonight. They were pushed to the one-yard line throughout the entire game. Just didn't give up any points, didn't give up any goals. And that goes to the defense. That goes to the goaltender as well. Wakeland, really good job by this UCO team to stay the battle stay the through course. adversity. To stay through the course and be only 10 seconds away from a win. Jake Perry misses the net on a one-timer. Quinn feeds it right back into the zone. Justin Zathopoulos jousts him with St. Clair in front of the net. Final second ticks off. And that's all she wrote. A 42-save shutout for Doug Wakeland. What a performance from the Colorado Springs native tonight. That's the best goaltending performance I think we've ever commentated live. Definitely, Gilly. It was not unreal. Even close. A 42-save shutout by Wakeland, and the way that he did it, he didn't look like he was uncomfortable at any point in the game. Even when the puck hit the crossbar, who like he knew that was gonna hit the crossbar. So you gotta give props to Wakeland. I think the Rebels gotta give props to him as well. They put up 42 shots in this game, 40, yeah, 42 shots. And I, I mean, it's so hard to come back tomorrow after a game like that, because how are you supposed to look down on yourself out there? You put up 42 shots, you out shoot someone, 42 to 16, really 15 because of the empty netter at the end. That'll shoot someone by almost 30 shots and to still get shut out and lose. That's a tough pill to swallow, Dom. Very tough pill, and it's even tougher when you add in the fact that they hit multiple posts here tonight. But we're back at it once again here tomorrow night at City National Arena. A 7.30 puck drop. The University of Central Oklahoma improves to 4-1 and one in the last two seasons against the UNLV Skating Rebels. But for now, we're going to say goodnight here in Summerlin. On behalf of myself, Dominic Lavoie, Ryan Gilder, A.J. Reed, Zoe Salas, Bo Kennedy, Eddie Gentile, our broadcast director, Jessica Sobel, broadcast tech, Kyle Kimsey, and our camera operator, Rolando Guerrero. We say goodnight from Las Vegas.